Welcome, I am Collins Trott, Child Development Faculty on the Wallace Community College Dothan campus. In this episode, we are going to be learning about curriculum planning. This episode describes how to plan activities for the entire year. Learning centers can enhance the topic at hand. Themes are a way to involve children in the planning. Observing children and conducting summary sessions can inform future planning. So join me, Ms. Trot, as we learn all about curriculum planning. There's an old cliche that states, if you want something to happen, you must plan for it to happen. Furthermore, you can add, if you want something wonderful to happen with the children in your classroom, then you must make wonderful plans. This statement is very true. Although your program can proceed without a great deal of formal planning, once you have set it up, you cannot expect particular results to occur unless you have had made plans for them to occur. Setting up your classroom into the self-directed learning environment is the foundation for such ongoing planning. They address the principal themes of the appropriate practices curriculum, let the environment do the teaching. Environment is the foundation of an early childhood curriculum. It needs to be aesthetically pleasing as well as cultivating children's curiosity and imagination. Looking at the entire space from the child's point of view, the self-directed learning environment has helped you to see and to set up such an environment. Now it's up to you and your children to plan activities based on children's needs and interests to promote their development of physical, cognitive, language, social, emotional, and creative skills. Such planning is not a chore, but is a challenge. The direction for a marvelous learning adventure that you and the children can pursue together. Making such plans with staff members and children can be as exciting as carrying them out. In curriculum planning, we must focus on the personal aspects of planning for children. Children ages three, four, and five years old respond best to materials and activities that speak to them personally. The overall curriculum must also speak to the children at this personal level. They then will respond at a personal level and become deeply involved in their own learning and self-directed learning centers you have provided. The most successful curriculum plans will be those that begin with the child and branch out in various directions. They will include the child's family, friends, pets, neighborhood, community, and finally the natural environment surrounding the child. You will need to write out these plans in a simple, straightforward manner for you and your staff to visualize and discuss as you create the plans. Using webs like this in curriculum planning is an effective way for the entire staff to contribute to short range and long range plans. Not only are webs practical devices in the curriculum planning process, but the creators of these webs, you and the staff, can see at a glance how the activities being planned can relate to one another and to the children. The next step for you and the staff is to choose a theme from the personal content web. At the beginning of the year, you may decide to select from the topic family because of its familiarity to the children. On the other hand, some programs prefer to start with a neighborhood because children want and need to learn about the new places where they'll be staying during the day. Whatever theme you select, this topic and its subtopics can carry the program for several weeks, depending on how much in detail you and the children want to use. As the year progresses, you and the staff, including the children, will be selecting other themes that seem appropriate from the personal content web. Again, depending on the children's needs and interests. To integrate the chosen theme into all learning centers, you should next create another curriculum web with a particular theme at the middle with the centers as the spokes of a wheel. Under each learning center have staff members brainstorm ideas for activities that will support such a theme in a particular center. Afterwards, you can discuss the various ideas and refine the list together by adding or deleting activities. Once the theme has been selected and the activities for each learning center decided on, the room can be arranged to support the theme. Often a new theme begins with a special activity in one or more of the centers. In programs where space is at premium, 
Learning centers can be combined to save space and still provide separate activities for children. For the basis for your planning for children is the 3M observations you and the staff have been making of the children's interactions with the materials and with one another in the learning centers. To make plans for individual children that satisfy their observed needs, you must interpret the data recorded. The children's levels of interaction along with their actions and words are the basis for information recorded. It is here that the observer must interpret the data in order to determine a child's needs. In addition to the recorded data, the interpreter should use knowledge of the child's ordinary behavior in the classroom. In making plans for an individual child, the teacher takes into consideration both the child's accomplishments and needs. Then the teacher lists possible activities that they will use in the child's interests and accomplishments to help fulfill their needs. Some programs prefer to make long-range plans for individuals in each of the classroom learning centers. After the child has been in the program long enough for the staff to be acquainted with them, the teachers look over recorded data on the child and decide on a set of learning goals. These are referred to at the monthly planning sessions that follow and are added to or changed as the year progresses. Is there any place for a total group activity within the self-directed learning environment? Yes, very definitely. It is important for individual children to feel a part of the total class as well. Your plan should call for activities that lend themselves to the performance of the entire group of children together, such as songs, finger plays, storytelling, musical games, creative movement and dancing, large motor games, and circle time. Because circle time itself provides the framework for any or all of these activities, many programs schedule a daily circle time within which such activities can take place. If circle time is scheduled at the beginning of the day, its purpose is to welcome the children and help them make the transition from home to school, as well as introduce them to the activities available in the various learning centers. If scheduled in the middle of the day, circle time is often served as a change of pace to speed things up or throw, slow things down and to help children focus on what comes next. Circle time at the end of the day helps children recall what they did, clarify any questions or concerns they might have, and make the transition from school to home with a goodbye song or chant. Whenever it is held, circle time should be planned to help the children focus their attention and interest on the activities at hand. Research has shown that the most successful circle time activities are stories and music. The least successful is show and tell. Whatever is planned, it should start with a high interest activity that involves the total group, thus engaging everyone's attention. Then a calming activity such as a finger play or storytelling can help slow things down and help focus the children's attention on what individuals have to say. This sort of total group activity can help pull together at the end of the day all the separate activities performed by individuals and small groups in the learning center as children volunteer to report on what they have accomplished during the day. Children can also give the teachers information about the activities that interested them the most. This interchange thus helps summarize the day's accomplishments for both children and teachers. Teachers should make note of such commentary for use during daily summary sessions. Now, let's review what we've learned. Learning centers can enhance the topic at hand. In curriculum planning, we must focus on the personal aspects of planning for children. Themes are a way to involve children in the planning. Observing children and conducting summary sessions can inform future planning. In making plans for an individual child, the teacher takes into consideration both the child's accomplishments and needs. Then the teacher lists possible activities that they will use with a child's interests and accomplishments to help fulfill their needs. When conducting circle time, remember to help children feel a part of a total group, have some total group activities, use circle time to help children make transitions from home to school, and start with high interest activities followed by calming activities. That wraps us up for this episode you can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your course. As always, if you have any questions, please contact me or your instructor. Thanks for joining me, Ms. Trot, as we learned all about curriculum planning. See you next time.